Hi, Douglas Simonson here coming to you from Mexico with another time-lapse video where I create a painting from start to finish. Today, as is often the case, I'm going to be painting a male nude, so I want to warn you ahead of time. If you don't want to see me painting a male nude, stop this video now. Okay? You've been warned. Today is not my usual straightforward beginning to end time-lapse video. Today you're going to see how I cope with problems that crop up in painting. And really, a lot of painting is about solving problems. So keep watching and you'll see what I mean. So this is the image I'm going to be working from today. It's from a photo shoot with Rod at Diamond Head Beach in Hawaii in 1998. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I usually tweak the images in Photoshop to make them easier to paint from. And there's a video that you can look at that in my uh, library of YouTube videos that explains all that. Anyway, that gives me two images. One is realistic and the other is tweaked, as I said, to make it easier to paint from. So while I'm painting, I'm referring to both of those images, but a lot more to the one that's tweaked because there's less detail in it. And that's a really good thing to not get caught up in detail. So when I've got the photographs that I'm, I'm going to work from, I don't then just dive into the painting. I usually do a lot of preparatory drawings, and that's what you're seeing here. I like to try different ideas, different ways of exaggerating and distorting and simplifying the image. And then when I've got the drawing the way I want it, then I transfer it to the canvas, and that's when the painting process begins. Once I transfer the drawing to the canvas, then I cover the entire canvas with an acrylic wash. And while that dries, I start mixing my colors. Sometimes tweaking the photograph in Photoshop gives me color ideas, and it really did in this case. I decided to use the color and designs that kind of just happened from the filters I used to tweak the photo. The purple and magenta sky especially. With that bright yellow shirt, a purple sky seemed like a good counterpoint. Purple and yellow are complementary colors, in case you didn't know. Here's where I actually start putting in the colors. My apologies about the top of the painting getting cut off. I have a new phone, I'm still getting used to it. Anyway, you can see I've blocked in the major color areas pretty quickly. That's usually a good idea. It gives you an idea of how well your colors and values are working early on. One thing I like to do in an expressionist painting like this one is let the colors bleed. You can see it in the yellow of the shirt bleeding into the background and the flesh colors happening in the umbrella. Well, the umbrella is turning into an opportunity to use most of the other, other colors in the painting. And that's always a good way to unify the composition by repeating colors in different areas. At this stage of the painting, I'm mostly just coloring in the blank spaces and constantly checking to see if I like the color combinations that are happening. And in this case, I really do. The painting is coming together pretty easily. Or at least it was until I got to the beach sand. What I was going for here was an approach that would mesh well with the abstract shapes happening elsewhere in the painting, but would still look like beach sand with footprints in it. Actually, what I was coming up with here doesn't look that bad to me now. I'm doing this video a week after completing the painting, but at the time, I wasn't happy with it at all. So, I painted out all the footprints to see what it would look like with just the lines. Again, looking at it now, I think this probably would have worked also. But again, at the time, I wasn't at all satisfied. So, I started just varying the areas of light and dark and trying different colors as well, just to see if I could get something to work. But no, it still wasn't working. So I tried putting some footprints and ridges of sand back in, but I couldn't get that to work either. By now I was getting kind of desperate. So I went back into Photoshop and tweaked the source photo a bit more to see if I could get some abstract patterns in the sand. So I got some, and I decided to try this and just see how it worked.
This didn't satisfy me either. So I took my attention away from the sand for a bit to do some finishing touches on the rest of the painting. Then I thought, maybe if I put those lines back in, it will help. And I could kind of obscure them a bit in the sand. So this wasn't too bad, but again, it was not what I was looking for. At this point, I started just trying whatever, making the figure glow with colors from the sky, varying the colors and values of the sand, just trying stuff. But it just looked worse and worse. So at this point, I decided to go back to a more realistic approach. I snapped a photo of the painting and then opened it in Photoshop and did a digital painting of the sand. And what I got was not too bad, so I thought, I'll try this. Painting it digitally first made it easier for me to paint on the actual painting, and it didn't take me too long to start getting something that I thought was okay. I kind of overdid it at first, too much detail, too many footprints. So then it was all about simplifying it and making it looser and more in keeping with the style of the rest of the painting. So here it's looking pretty okay. But after looking at it a bit, I realized it still looked a little too careful. So then I went in and got a little sloppy on purpose with big strokes and drippy paint. Then I was okay with it, not 100% satisfied, but I figured I had taken it as far as I could. Then it was just a matter of adding a few final touches, mostly on the legs. And that's the final painting, Rod's Umbrella. You can see it now on my website at douglassimonson.com. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe it's inspired you and maybe it's helped you realize that problems are always going to crop up when you're painting. That's part of the process. And it's just a matter of trying stuff until you get it fixed. So if you have gotten inspired, get out your tubes and brushes and paint and go paint. <laughs>